So with that, I'd like to now introduce our next speaker. And I think he really represents what's possible in Nigeria in terms of an entrepreneurship. He's none other than Mr. John Obaro, the Managing Director of System Specs. And I'll just give you some background to about his, his um, business and, of course, he, him as a person. So having enjoyed a successful career with the former International Merchant Bank, IMB, Mr. Obaro founded System Specs some 29 years ago as a West African partner to Systems Union UK, offering the Sun System suite of solutions. But the company soon started developing its own proprietary payroll and human resources management solutions, Human Manager, I'm sure many of us have heard of it, which has become a preferred choice for many leading public and private sector organizations in Nigeria and West Africa. And in the last decade, System Spec has become a leader in the Nigerian e-payment space with its Remita, another word I'm sure many of us would know, its Remita solution, which enables efficient and easy payment and collection of funds for individuals and corporate organizations, both in the public and private sector. Remita, as a payment gateway, pioneered the federal government's Treasury Single Accounts, TSA, project for the Central Bank of Nigeria and processed about $6 billion worth of transactions on a monthly basis. Ladies and gentlemen, please can you put your hands together for him as he steps forward to lead us in the next presentation. I think we can do better than that. We can be more generous with our applause. I think he has achieved quite a bit and contributed to the development of Nigeria's public sector. The Director General, SEC, Alaji Yuguda, uh, the Chairman of Council, Mr. Woturo, the Registrar and Members of Council, let me say a big thank you for the privilege of being before you today. Um, by the time I leave this place, I will be able to pretend that I'm a registrar too. I must salute the quality of conversation that has gone on this morning. And frankly, already it is clear that the solution to this problem is in this room. The only thing I will be doing is adding my voice from an external perspective. But there's really nothing new I would be saying that you don't appear to know already. I'm supposed to have some slides. Um, is anybody working on that, please? Thank you. What do our emergent, um, next slide, please. What do our emergent stakeholders want? The market is changing. The age of our investors, next slide, please. The age of our investors. Next slide, thank you. The age of our investors are changing. Many of them are younger people. We now have millionaires at the age of 20, and they want to participate in the capital market. This generation have a global outlook and not a local outlook. They are less patient with tardiness or inefficiencies. They simply move. Since they are not just the future, but already here with us today, we must come up with solutions that speak to their needs. They desire timely, qualitative, and reliable information. They are not interested in face-to-face -face meetings with financial advisors when they can live their life on apps. They want self-service. They want automated end-to-end -end service they would rather avoid middlemen. Um, I didn't say stockbrokers. Your industry must respond or external forces will force you into irrelevance as they move their money elsewhere in this increasingly larger global village. In other words, if you don't take control of your space, they will choose to move. 
I saw a very interesting story of a young man, Basi, one of the co-founders of Bamboo, who tried to open an international account via a Nigerian broker, but was told he would have to wait three weeks because the person who handles such transactions was away on leave. Noticing an opportunity, he tapped a friend to co-found Bamboo, an investment app to provide solution to the paucity of foreign investments. By the way, depending on regulatory barriers to protect you long term will not work. You can ask banks who did everything they could to prevent telcos from coming into the place. You can only delay, but eventually efficiency will speak. Recently, Bamboo, RiseVest, and a number of others had their accounts blocked. They have won in court. It's a long journey, but it is to give you an idea of the kind of things that will begin to happen. Unclaimed dividends, my topic for today. We all know what an unclaimed dividend is. They refer to that portion of total declared dividends payable to equity shareholders after deduction of government withholding tax, but remains unclaimed for six months, I believe, after the payable date. Now, what are the things causing this? Most times, the registrars cannot locate the rightful owners. Sometimes, the owners <clears throat> Me, or their proxies cannot locate the paying agency. Sometimes the beneficiary is aware but reluctant to activate collection for different reasons. At the end of the year 2019, my understanding is that the unclaimed dividends in the Nigerian market was about 159 billion naira. Unclaimed dividend is a worldwide problem occurring in various degrees across different nations. What are the contributory factors? Next slide. One of the cons contributory factors is change of address, especially when everything was very manual. When beneficiaries, their heirs, or next of kin who should receive dividends, relocate or move to a new address without reporting such changes to their bank or stockbroker. That can lead to the build-up. Then you have situations where people change their names, either due to marriage, religious, or family reasons, and they fail to report such to the concerned agency. We also have or reported bank account closure. Whether the account was closed by the beneficiary or the bank for whatever reason, when there's time now to pay dividends, you have a problem. Again, coming from historical times when forms were filled manually, you have incomplete and illegible records. We also have unaddressed beneficiary death. Some beneficiaries do not bother to update their families, next of kin's heirs, with details of their shares, estates, and accounts. Thus, upon their death, their benefactors who could claim such benefits are completely in the dark. There's also what I call strategic negligence. There are investors who know they have unclaimed dividends, but strategically refuse to activate their claims. Sometimes they deliberately leave dividends as a means of accumulating funds for a particular project. Such investors may not be interested in collecting the little dividends paid to them until they consider it big enough. This, another group are the secret shareholders. Some people purchase shares secretly sometimes with fake names, or to hide their wealth from their spouses or relations. 
with increasingly stringent controls on KYC now, such people may find it difficult to lay claim to such. Then there are outrightly fraudulent purchases. Long time ago, before KYC became a thing, some investors actually bought shares in fictitious names just to have the shares, but can now not open their bank accounts with those names. Next slide. Creating the atmosphere for the resolution of this problem. First off, before we hit ourselves too hard, from what we've seen earlier, are all dividends claimable, i.e., can we achieve value zero, dead persons without forwarding address, fraudulent purchases, fake names, insignificant amounts simply ignored, especially where the process of resolution is so cumbersome. Having said that, we must also ask ourselves a few hard questions. Do we really want to solve the problem? Some believe tech can do a lot of things, but you should never use tech to your own disadvantage. Have we not overheard conversations in the industry that it is not in our interests to have efficient payments? We need to identify, for instance, who benefits if the unclaimed dividends challenge remains. Who stands to benefit? And I believe I have the protection of the DG, so when I say anything, I can quickly run out. Who benefits from unclaimed dividends? Registrars, in one form or another? Companies? Shareholders? We cannot look for the solution from those who may stand to benefit from the non-resolution. Could it be that we are dealing with organized confusion, all motion, deliberate all motion, no movement? My prayer is that may we not be counted among those who talk about solving the problem, but work to ensure that the problem remains. Who should be motivated to solve the problem? Who should be penalized if the problem remains unsolved? We must come up with a scheme that encourages all parties to seek a solution. I understand that today there's a regula regulation that says that 12 months from the payment date of a declared dividend, 90% of the unclaimed portion will be returned to the company that declared the dividend, while 10% will remain in the custody of the registrars. If this is true, why do we expect the company or the registrars to take on the added task of making it easier for them to lose money? How about asking companies and registrars to start paying a penalty interest on all unclaimed dividends for a start. Commendable efforts so far. Next slide, please. We must commend SEC, who along with industry stakeholders have at various times tried to confront this problem even with technology. Unfortunately, I believe it is time to revisit some of the earlier approaches, which were semi-manual in nature, as systems can now be better designed with a more integrated approach and minimal user involvement. A major step that was introduced in the resolution of the unclaimed dividend challenge is the establishment of electronic dividend payment system called EDMMS where shareholders' investors' dividends are paid direct to the respective accounts of investors. Based on information available at the, on the SEC website, investors have to follow four steps. Log on to the portal, search for your name, you note the registrar's name, 
Then you do a search on the portal uh, for the, the registrar. You go for the registrar's form. You've lost me. To complete the form, you're expected to also remember your account opening date, your previous address, and say, seriously? Then you download and fill your registrar's form. After confirmation that your name appeared, you are now required to print it and repeat, it, repeat this process for as many registrars that you have. Then you now take this form to go and submit it at your bank, duly signed by your bank, and then you now take it to your registrars in order to receive dividends. With all due respect, just as confirmed by the gentlemen who have spoken earlier, this is a semi-manual system which can lead to widespread dissatisfaction and apathy. Meanwhile, I also noticed a lot of threats along the line that um, if you do not update your records, then uh, it will become a chargeable service. Uh, usually, such threats don't work. Uh, people have to see value for them to move. Next slides. Tech trends that can help. Today, we have very strong data and analytics, cloud computing, artificial intelligence, distributed ledger technology, blockchain. Um, the chairman, who claims not to be a technical person, has also covered some of these things in his presentation. These are new things that are becoming part of our daily life, and we can rest on them to begin to enhance our solution delivery. What is our way forward? Next slide. The permanent solution, from my point of view, is automation plus legislation. Now, there's a popular saying that to a carpenter, every problem is a nail, and the solution is a hammer. I'm not a legislator. The only thing I know is about automation. So I will be talking more on the automation side. Each stakeholder in the value chain, the stockbrokers, CSCS, registrars, SEC, regulators, must generally carry out their individual roles efficiently and effectively. This can be made easier with an integrated system that is visible to all parties. A system that would allow all parties to play their assigned roles efficiently, yet not able to go beyond their brief. At the center of the design is what I would call a unique investor number. And like I said, all these conversations are already going on amongst you. At the center of the design is a unique investor number with KYC and AML, anti-money laundering, and investors' comprehensive details captured up front. UIN subsequently ties all an investor's identity details and transactions together. This can be accessed via APIs by registrars, stockbrokers, and other stakeholders. There are two areas of focus in the design of the system to clear the unclaimed dividends. The first one is the old data, the old data of shareholders. A separate strategy needs to be developed to clean this up. The strategy to clean this up will be different from the strategy to ensure clean data going forward to minimize a rebuild of unclaimed dividends after we might have cleaned up the old. Next slide, old investors. The strategy focus here is to solve the identity challenge of the data set. By identity challenge, we mean that we do not have sufficient information such as account number or parameters to easily identify the persons on the unclaimed dividend register. 
to resolve this challenge, there are two scenarios that need to be addressed. In the first scenario, an individual is aware that he has unclaimed dividend, he comes forward to identify himself as the owner of the unclaimed dividend. Straightforward. In the second scenario, we have a difficult residue where either the owner is unaware or is unwilling to come forward. We must look for them. Under this scenario, the system uses advanced technical tools such as data analytics and AI to identify persons or relations and trace them using whatever limited information we have about them. For this to be effective, there must be a back-end integration with large national assets and data sets such as NIMSI, Telcos, BVN, INEC, and hopefully NPC, Population Council. Please note that several digital identity platforms are also coming up. Having done that, we are left with a much shorter list that we cannot trace. We must come up with a legal way to permanently close the case and delist from the unclaimed dividend register. New investors. The second is that going forward, new investors should never find their names under the unclaimed dividends register. Appropriate K KYC ML having been done up front, investors' comprehensive details captured to a central database. They've been assigned a UIN that ties all transactions together. There's no reason why it should go into the register again. We need to ensure that repeat share buyers who have ever traded or bought shares, irrespective of the company or register they now relate with, they never need to fill long forms afresh. That is one of the ways inconsistent data leading to reconciliation issues are generated. The stockbroker and registrar of the new company should be able to obtain the relevant info from a centralized place. Using APIs, registrars and stockbrokers should inherit latest investor data from a centralized database. Investors should never need to reprovide such information directly to registrars or stockbrokers. Dividends are then paid direct to customers' accounts and therefore should never go into the unclaimed register. Any failed payment for whatever reason after 72 hours should automatically trigger a search and rescue routine and since appropriate EML, uh, KYC AML has been done, if for whatever reason, maybe an account has now been closed, we should now have a different routine, which I call a search and rescue, to immediately resolve the problem by searching for additional information on such an investor and resolve it immediately within, say, 72 hours, 24 hours, or whatever you may decide. Next slide. Legislation, which is my final slide. Our current laws cannot motivate the industry players to aggressively seek a resolution. We can't look for solutions, like I said, from the people who stand to benefit from a non-resolution of the problem. Laws should be enacted that move the customer to the center of the benefits of investments. If dividends remain unclaimed, there should be a motivation for companies and registrars to aggressively resolve such a problem, not indirectly benefit. I also said there should be a time limit and a process to conclude that dividends will never be payable, will never be paid. 
And this can then revert to a party that cannot influence the build-up of the unclaimed dividend register. Such funds, for instance, can probably be dedicated to charity organizations. Thank you very much, and all the very best in your deliberations today. I understand I need to stand for jam exam. <laughs> Not quite, but thank you so much. Please, another round of applause for him. I think that his passion about solving the problem is palpable in the energy with which he delivered it and, of course, the insight that he provided. We don't have much time, but we'll be happy to take maybe one or two questions. So if you can just raise up your hand, we'll come to you. Uh, if you have any thoughts on the presentation. I've been told I can take three questions. So if you would like to interrogate that presentation or maybe ask Mr. Barrow a couple of questions about the thoughts that he has put there, please raise your hands and we'll come right to you. It seems like you have been very convincing with your proposal, sir, because I can't see. OK, I see a hand now. And I see here. I'll come to you in a moment, sir. And be very brief. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. My name is Basil Aharanwa. I work for Centurion Registrars. As a matter of fact, you have made very salient points. And as a registrar, my responsibility is to ensure that the system works perfectly. Now, you said something about beneficiaries. Can you suggest a, a, a medium or a process of controlling this unclaimed dividends by setting up a system that will not benefit from the, uh, the, the continued uh, you know, withholding of the withholding tax, uh, sorry, of the unclaimed dividends? a system that will help in solving this problem. Thank you. Thank you. So it sounds like you've given us maybe to some extent give, drill down and give us maybe an infrastructure that you think can work that will address this issue. But if you don't mind, let me take another. Okay. Uh, thank you. I will be standing on existing protocol. My name is Akim Adeinka. I work for Greenwich Registrars. I'm not uh, hearing you well, please. My name is Akim Adeinka. I work for Greenwich Registrars. My comment is on new investor. Um, we are aware that um, SEC have put up a process whereby new investors are not expected to form part of unclaimed dividend. Uh, buying and selling of shares usually take place at the uh, uh, CS, CSS and uh, part of the key points or criteria for you to conclude your transaction is bank details. So, and um, once this transaction is occurred and settled, uh, information will be transmitted to the registrars. So, part of the information that has been transmitted to registrars is the bank details. And uh, I, I'm not sure the level of compliance at the CSS level. It's only the commission can that, that can comment on that. But at the registrar level, I want to believe that once, once that come, definitely the share or the new shareholders are definitely being paid. Just to let you know that regarding new investors, new investors no longer form part of or claim due there because of the process that the commissions are set put in place. Thank you. I think the clarification that no this microphone seems to be fairly not a bit. Okay, there you go. And everyone, good morning, everyone. Um, I stand on the and I welcome everybody to this conference. Um, my question: My name is Fumi Babalola, and I work for Apple Capital Registrars. Hey question are around how 
you. Sorry. Um, good morning, everyone. Okay, I'm sure it's better. My name is Fumi Babalola, and I work for APL Capital Registrars. Uh, my questions are around how we seem to have negated people's address in helping us reduce this um, huge unclaimed dividend figure that we keep talking about. So you mentioned the old uh, data, how we can um, work on cleaning this or identifying these beneficiaries. I also love the fact that you mentioned a lot of institutions that would assist to actually identify these actual be uh, beneficiaries. So my question is, do you think NIPOST, it would also assist? I know you mentioned MPC. The reason why I'm asking, will NIPOST also play a role in this is because of the addresses. Because these old um, investors once lived somewhere. I know that you know, our address system in Nigeria is still evolving, but do you think that something a night post or you know registrars can do to actually dig deeper into this old data and assist in the cleanup thank you so i think the middle we, we can, i think we can only really take three questions right, if you don't mind you can just respond briefly to that thank you very much um if i understand the first uh, question from basel yes properly, um you want me to recommend a system? I'm not quite sure it's as simplistic as that. Okay. It, it's, um, you need to, you can adapt a system, but there's got to be a custom built infrastructure. Uh, that's the more practical way I expect this to do. Uh, yes, you can have a building block, a starting block, and um, at the risk of marketing what we do, for instance, in system specs, we have a remitter uh, which was adapted you know, for TSA. That's not what it was purposely built for, but it became useful when you know, the, the, the business opportunity came. You know, so you have a number of things you need to consider uh, to build in the different players. The second question by, um, I can't remember, the, let me go back to um, the night post, yeah, no, the second question on, on claimed registers that new investors are no longer getting on the list. I'm not quite sure because um, I'm aware that uh, you have MTN, Airtel, recent um, players in the market. You also have unclaimed uh, dividends. Now, no matter what we do, there will still be some unclaimed dividends. And I said that up front. We, we can only hope to reduce it very significantly to a, a negligible level. Now, one of the reasons why this can happen is, for instance, um, somebody has an, a bank account, and for whatever reason, the bank closes the account maybe for fraud or for some other reason, or he himself closed the bank account without getting back to you, when it is time for you to pay, it's going to hit a dead end. I mean, I'm just giving that example. Okay. Uh, you also have situations where dead people, maybe died in test states, no next of kin or traceable next of kin. So you can still have those things happen. Now, that's where I now said you can come up with a search and rescue routine, a search and search rescue routine, a programming routine that would immediately take that data and begin to search through the ecosystem, matching data information here and there to be able to locate you know, uh, that person in one form or the other. The last question was about NIPOST. Yes, um, NIPOST and a lot is also happening there. You can also use their own data to be able to track people, 
some probably registered for PO boxes several years ago. Uh, and then the, the thing is to really solve this problem in Nigeria, we will not just be looking at identity problems, we are also looking at residential identity, i.e. our streets, every nook and corner of the country, well mapped out. And I do know that Nine Post, they are also doing something along that line. You know, it's only when you really have that data in place that I would think it can become more useful to you. But I believe there's a lot you can get from NIMSI as we stand. There wouldn't be too much to do apart from the technical interface. And they, they already have APIs, which can be called you know, to interrogate some of these things. Thank you. Please, as it goes back to his seat, another round of applause, please. <laughs>